hemoglobin binds dioxygen reversibly each hemoglobin contains four subunits and uh, each of the subunit can bind to one of the dioxygen molecules so here I am providing four different reactions where each of the subunit of hemoglobin is reacting with a dioxygen in four different steps and for each step there is a stepwise stability constant so in general the trend that is expected for the stepwise stability constant is to drop but what we find in the case of uh, hemoglobin binding reversibly to dioxygen is there is an increase in the stepwise stability constant and that to the increase is exponential so how to explain the exponential increase in the uh, rates of the stepwise stability constant then we have the mechanism called as cooperativity this was uh, introduced by Perutz therefore that mechanism is also called as Perutz mechanism or it is also called as a trigger action mechanism so simply speaking cooperativity is like a relay mechanism to understand this cooperativity we should uh, have a knowledge of terms called as allosterism what is allosterism in the sense it is the existence of hemoglobin in two different forms or two different states the two different states are the unbound deoxy state or the bound oxy state the unbound deoxy state it is called as a T state T in the sense tout or a tense state or the bound state it is also called as an R state or a relaxed state now there are also a group of scientists who believe that there is a bound T states which creates a driving force towards the cooperativity but we are not going to discuss such a bound T state usually when we say T state means it is taken as a unbound hemoglobin and R state is taken as a bound hemoglobin so let me uh, describe it in this way suppose if I am choosing a T state or a deoxy hemoglobin state where the iron is present uh, below the plane of the porphyrin it is not in the plane of the porphyrin due to its higher size due to its larger size once it is shifting into oxyhemoglobin now the size of the iron decreases and it can fall into the plane of the porphyrin so as it enters into the plane of the porphyrin this brings some conformational changes so yes this is triggering the uptake of dioxygen by another subunit right as this triggers the uptake of uh, dioxygen by another subunit the rates of the reaction will shoot up so that is how we explain the process of cooperativity one subunit is enhancing the rate of uptake of another subunit this process we call it as a cooperativity and for cooperativity it is usually explained by Hill's constant we need not go in deep for the Hill's constant because there is no chemistry hidden in this Hill's constant which is given by n if n equal to 1 cooperativity is absent if n is greater than 1 it is found to be having a positive cooperativity and if n is less than 1 we call it as a negative cooperativity so iron binding to dioxygen or hemoglobin binding to dioxygen the n values are found to be greater than 1 in all species in human beings it is found to be around 2.8 so we call it as a positive cooperativity then to explain more about this uh, cooperativity we will take the help of oxygen saturation curves or we can also call them as oxygen adsorption isotherms in this case we have percentage saturation we have taken from 0 till 100 and to another axis we have partial pressure of dioxygen so we are trying to compare myoglobin which we have uh, not taken up but uh, there is a comparison between myoglobin which is a monomer of hemoglobin and also hemoglobin at different pH levels when we clearly see the hemoglobin the curve is a sigmoidal curve so what unique feature that we find in this hemoglobin is as partial pressure of oxygen is increasing the percentage saturation is also increasing but that percentage saturation is not touching 100 percent whereas in the case of myoglobin as the partial pressure of dioxygen increase it is reaching 100 percent saturation so for this reason we say myoglobin can act better as a storage protein whereas hemoglobin cannot act as a storage protein it is only acting as a transport protein it cannot store properly 
also we find one more difference at a higher pH what we find is suppose let me take an example of uh, 50 torr pressure at 50 torr pressure when the pH is low when the acidic conditions slowly when it is moving towards acidic condition from 7.4 to 7.2 or it may still drop to 7, 6.8 and so on so as the pH is dropping towards acidity let us see this at uh, a partial pressure of 50 torr the percentage saturation is just above 30 percent when the pH levels are low but when the pH levels are higher at the same partial pressure of dioxygen the percentage saturation is found to be anywhere above 50 so what we conclude from this oxygen adsorps adsorption isotherm or oxygen saturation curve is as the partial pressure of dioxygen remain constant at a higher pH percentage saturation will be higher whereas at a lower pH percentage saturation will be lower also this is uh, for pH that we are comparing let us also compare uh, by taking some other parameters if at all the temperature is very high now again let me put that same parameters of partial pressure compared with the percentage saturation for a given partial pressure at a higher temperature percentage saturation will be low whereas at lower temperature percentage saturation will be high so it simply means as temperature increases and if the partial pressure of the oxygen is constant the percentage saturation will be low so the hemoglobin saturation levels will be low at a higher temperature hemoglobin percentage saturation will be higher at a lower temperature we can also see it in the case of carbon dioxide higher the concentration of carbon dioxide lower will be the saturation of hemoglobin lower the levels of carbon dioxide higher will be the percentage saturation of the hemoglobin so for a better saturation of hemoglobin with dioxygen what are the conditions means carbon dioxide should be low temperature should be low and pH should be high these are the three conditions so where do the equilibrium shift whether the equilibrium shift towards right or left can depend on these three conditions if I say that the pH is increasing then the equilibrium will shift towards right when the protein is binding to the dioxygen in the beginning we have seen in one of the videos where the protein binds to dioxygen the equilibrium could shift towards right or left this shifting of uh, equilibrium towards right or left depend on various parameters so these are some of those parameters as pH increases the equilibrium shift towards right pH decreases equilibrium shift towards left as temperature increases the equilibrium shift towards left whereas as the temperature drop the p uh, equilibrium will shift towards right lower the levels of carbon dioxide equilibrium will shift towards right higher the levels of carbon dioxide equilibrium will shift towards left now